Mr. Lowe planted 120 pots of orchids and roses. Three-fifths of the pots were orchids. Among the roses, there was an equal number of pots of red and pots of yellow ro roses. How many pots of yellow roses were there? So the total we are here we see is 120. And three-fifths of this, that is three-fifths of these pots, that is orchids, and the remaining has to be two-fifths. And there were an equal number of pots of red and pots of yellow roses. So this is equally split into two parts. So one has to be one over five and one over five for the other. So this is red and this is yellow. So now what we need to figure out is how many pots of yellow roses were there. So that is one-fifth of 120. So one by five times 120, that gives you 24. So the answer is 24 here. The average age of three dogs was 12 years old. The age of each dog was different. The youngest dog was eight years old. Which of the following is a possible age of the oldest dog? So now when you know that if we say average, it's the sum of all the three dogs' ages divided by the total number of dogs, which is three. Let's assume we already know one of the dogs is eight years old, right? But we don't know the other dog, which maybe we'll make it as A, for example, and then the other dog as well, which we do not know. This whole thing divided by three, that gives you the average. And the average right now we know is that the average is 12. So first step, we just figure out this, remove this three, so we can multiply both sides with 3. So in that case, let's say times 3 and times 3 here. Now this becomes 8 plus A plus B is equal to 36. And A plus B is equal to 36 minus 8. So that is equal to 28. Now, 28 a plus B should be equal to 28. So first thing what we can do is divide this by 2. So that gives you um, 14. Both of them can be 14, but we know that there is an oldest, their ages are different. So both cannot be 14. So what we can do is plus 1, increase for one of the dogs or and decrease for the other dogs, meaning make it as 13 for one and 15 for another dog. So now we have the three dogs, eight years old, 13 years old, and 15 years old. So the oldest dog has to be now 15. The ratio of the area of rectangle A to the shaded area of rectangle A is seven is to two. So in this case, the area of rectangle A is this whole portion, which is given by seven units. And that is compared with the ratio of the area of the shaded part, which is given as two units. The ratio of area of rectangle B, area of rectangle B, this is the whole piece, and two, the unshaded area of rectangle B. So that is, now we are not comparing with the shaded, but the unshaded portion. So the total area of B is given by five units. And if that is the case, then the unshaded area will equal to be two units. That is according to the question. Find the ratio of the unshaded area of rectangle A to the area of the whole figure. See, let's just take find the ratio of the unshaded area of rectangle A. What is the unshaded area of rectangle A? Here, the total is seven units. Shaded is two units. So this has to be five units. Similarly here, five units is the total. Two units is the unshaded portion. So here it has to be five minus two, which is three units. Now to just to 
uh, understand this further, let's just draw a diagram to show two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is, say, area. This represents the area of rectangle A. And out of these seven units here, we know that five units here belongs to unshaded portion. And this two belongs to shaded. Similarly, uh, there is an overlap here. We'll come to that. When you talk about rectangle B, there are two units in the shaded portion. And then, oh, sorry, there are three units in the shaded portion. And then we have two more units here. So this is the unshaded. And here it has to be three. But you look at it, the same, this to this, the same portion is represented at two units in the case of rectangle A, whereas in the case of rectangle B, the same area is shown as three units. So now we cannot compare them directly because the unit sizes are different. So what we have to do here is that we subdivide them into equal sized units. How do we do that? Two and three. What is the LCM of two and three? That is going to be six. So here, we will divide this, each of these, into three parts. So this will become two times three equals six units. Similarly, here, we will divide each of these into two units so that the, and further subdivide into two of them, so that will become two, sorry, three times two equals six units. So this is what represents this one. Now when you do that, the same thing cascades for the rest of the units as well. So you're saying times three, so here we have five units, times three is equal to 15 units here. That is for this portion of unshaded portion for A. And for unshaded portion of B is this one. So here, the 2 times 2 equals 4 units. Now the ratio of the unshaded area of rectangle A. Unshaded area of rectangle A is 15 units. Is 2 area of the whole figure. Now when you come about the whole figure, I have to take this, which is 15 units, plus this portion is common to both. So I will have to take one of them. Again, this is six and this is six. So I'll just take one six here. And these two units, which is actually becoming into four units, so four. So this is five, one, 25. So it's 15 is to 25. And on simplification, it becomes 5, 3 is 15, and 5, 5 is 25. So the answer is 3 is to 5. Express 7 over 25 as a decimal. Sever is a whole number here, whereas the decimal part is represented by 3 over 25. So whatever you get here, that will come as 7 dot, and then after that, whatever you come here is because of this. Now take this 3 over 25, we have to find out uh, the decimal portion, but how do we normally do is divide 3 by 25. But rather than doing it, the simpler way is we know that 25 can be converted into 100. So we can actually make it as time 4 into 100 and also multiply the numerator. So that will give you 12 over 100. And now the division is easier because we know that if you divide by 100, which has two zeros, right now, 12 is, the decimal is here. It could be written as 12.0 as well, but there is no decimal part. So the dot will be here. Because we have two zeros, now the dot will jump two steps and reach here into this. So this would become 0 0.12. And here, this is actually 7 plus 3 over 25. That is what this uh, number means here. So in this case, it will be, 7 plus 0 0.12, which is 7.12. So the answer is 
Tammy recorded the following temperatures for two days. Day one, it is 30 degrees centigrade, and day two, it is 24 degrees centigrade. Find the percentage change in the temperature for day two. So first, we have to find out how much is the change. The change is 30 minus 24. Oh, this is 30 minus 24, which is equal to 6. So 6 degrees centigrade is the change. And now we are comparing the change with respect to day one. We are just trying to find out how much is the change from D1. So the base here is going to be out of 30 degrees. 6 out of 30 degrees, that is the change. And in turn, to convert it into percentage, we multiply it by 100. So again, here, 1, 0 gets cancelled. 3 times 2 is 6. So that is 20 percentage change. The answer is 20 percent. Find the maximum number of 2 centimeter cubes that can be put into a box measuring 10 centimeter by 8 centimeter by 5 centimeter. Now let's just uh, visually, let's say we draw a tank. So this is, let's say, length is 10 centimeter, width is 8 centimeter from here to here, and height is 5 centimeter. So that's the uh, dimensions for the box, or tank, sorry, mm, put into a box, okay, box. That's the dimensions for the box, and now we have to find how many number of two centimeter cubes can be put packed inside this. Now, assuming if I'm going to place a cube here, let me see along this line how many can I uh, place. See, uh, this is going to be something like this. Now, this here, it takes up two centimeter. Now, I can keep another cube here, another, and so on, because I have 10 centimeters, that can be made up of 10 divided by 2, which is 5, centi five cubes. Right? Now, here, if you look at it from here to this side, it's 8 centimeters here. So, if, I, if my sides of the cube is going to be 2 centimeter, then again I can have 1, 2, 3, 4. I can have four cubes along this. The next one is on from bottom to top, how many cubes can be placed. Now this is five centimeter. So I can keep two centimeter, another cube two centimeter, it becomes four centimeter. Now I cannot place another cube because it will cross this line, which is the height. So I can only place two of them here. So I can place two. So total number of cubes is five times 4 times 2 that gives 1040 yeah this is 40 so their number is 40 which one of the following shapes has the greatest number of lines of symmetry now you know that line of symmetry for example uh, if you have a circle i can just draw n number of lines the left and the right side would be equal as long as this line passes to the center. So the line of symmetry is one which divides the shape into two mirror-like images. So in this case, I can do one line here. Uh, that's not correct. It should assuming it should go through this. Then another here. Mm, yeah. So if I cut along this line, then I will get two mirror images. Same here as well. Now if I draw a line across this. If you bend the shape along this line, you will see that there will be two mirror images obtained. The same is applicable for this side as well, exactly in the center. So one, two, three, four. So there are four lines of symmetry here. This is a six-sided figure, so it's a hexagon. And here again, I can draw a line like this. It will have two mirror-like images. right? And I can draw a line like this. That's two mirror images here. 
and I can also draw a line like this so to give you two mirror images now I have got already three right I have got three parts three lines of uh, symmetry now if I were to actually cut along this exact center then I will have two mirror like images the same applies for this as well and this side as well so that's three lines more so totally six lines here in this case I can draw something like this and draw something like this no I don't think I can draw any more lines so it's two lines of symmetry here again uh, this is having one two three four five uh, sided star right it's not an evenly uh, uh, I can draw one line of symmetry here and that's it I won't be able to draw anything else which one of the following shapes has a greater number of lines of symmetry? So here it's 6, which is answer is P.